I just love fish, but I try to buy it wisely because so much fish is endangered. You can go to seafoodwatch.org to find good fish choices, but today I'm going right to the source and cooking with a chef who's an expert on the subject of sustainable fish. He's Hung Nguyen, a top chef winner, classically trained and known for his skill with seafood. We'll meet him where he lives on the Upper West Side of New York and he'll take us to some of his favorite haunts. Back here in my kitchen, we'll make simple and tasty delicious shrimp wraps with a nod to Hung's Vietnamese heritage. You know what I'm really looking forward to? His roasted whole Brancino. Perfect when you want to impress someone, even though it's ridiculously simple. And he'll show us the trick of deboning whole fish. Chef Hung is bringing sustainable fish to Sarah's weeknight meals. That's all coming up. Funding provided by... Family owned and Indiana grown, Maple Leaf Farms is a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Providing a variety of duck products for home kitchens, Maple Leaf Farms duck helps inspire culinary adventures everywhere. Maple Leaf Farms. Subaru builds vehicles like the versatile Subaru Forester with symmetrical all-wheel drive and plenty of cargo room. A recipe made for whatever the day brings. Subaru, a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. And thanks to the generous support of... Hung Nguyen is our guest today. He's a Top Chef winner and an expert in seafood. We caught up with him in his neighborhood in the Upper West Side of New York City. I think food is definitely a comfort. Certain dishes is definitely a comfort food where it's like a safety blanket because it just brings back the culture, the history, the memories of eating that. I was born in Ho Chi Minh City, which I know it as Saigon. After the war, everyone was broke and poor, and we'd eat bread and dip it in sugar, and that was what you ate, and water. My father escaped along with my brothers on a wooden boat. So many people drowned and died along the way, but their boat was obviously the lucky ones. A thousand other boats sank. A lot of Vietnamese refugees needed help and sponsorship to come over to America, and my family was sponsored. And a folk singer helped my father start his first restaurant. And the kind of food they served was really my mom's cooking. She's very critical. She has an amazing palate. My mom spent her whole life in the kitchen to support us, to make it work, you know, and she worked seven days a week. Every day, every day, every day, till three, four in the morning. She handpicked everything. You know, I would go with her to the supermarket and she would have the owner take out the boxes from the storage so she can pick through each one of the boxes. And, and it drove them nuts. <laughs> I realized I wanted to be a chef when I was about 13, when I heard about the Culinary Institute of America. And I was so fascinated with chef hats and everybody's in white and, you know, everyone just, you know, like in the military. I did pretty well in school. I was on Top Chef in uh, 2007. Winning Top Chef was just an amazing feeling because when I was younger, my goal was to be famous before I was 30. And it happened when I was 29, and the feeling was like, wow, I've worked so hard, my family struggles so much, and I won. Like, my career is set. I started doing pop-up restaurants in New York City. And we're doing a pop-up on a voyage to Vietnam. To pursue my passion for Asian-inspired dishes. The Vietnamese clay pop pork belly. That I personally love to eat and that I want to share with people. Doing things I grew up eating. It's like a, uh, a Vietnamese tamale. That mainstream restaurants won't serve. And it's been fun. And really good feedback and people are loving it. My philosophy on food is People need to learn how to taste food. The food is supposed to taste good, not mediocre, not just okay, not just for the party aspect of it. Everything I cook is always inspired by something that I loved. I love seafood because even when I was a child in Vietnam, we eat a lot of small fish and I would just munch on the fish, eat all the bones, you know. I like cooking it much more than meat because it takes a little more skill and you have to be a little more delicate with great techniques. Uh, maybe that one, let me see the eyes. Perfect. Beautiful. The message I want to convey in food is definitely that there's soul. There's someone passionate behind 
the dish. And I just hope they can see that, see the balance and the care that I put in there. Flavor is culture, I think. You know, like the Latinos say, sabor, you know, it's like, it's soul, it's flavor, you know. Hi, Sarah. Hong, hello. How, How are, are you? you? How was the train ride? It was good. Take a little nap, yeah. Yeah, well, that, I love trains. What have you got? Some vegetables, lettuce, cucumber, tomatoes. Oh, ter terrific. Come on in. What do you think of my garden? Isn't that something? It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautifully manicured. <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> I'm Sarah Moulton. Welcome to Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Sustainable Surf is on the menu today, and my guest is a Top Chef winner and a graduate of my alma mater, and his name is Hung Huin, and I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yes, and he's a complete expert on fish, which is what we need, and shellfish, since we're discussing sustainable surf, and also just cooking with fish, which so many people are scared of, I don't know why. All right, we're getting started. The first thing we're making is... We're going to grow shrimp. Um with a lettuce wrap, with heirloom tomatoes, and cucumber, and lots of herbs, mint, cilantro, and scallions, my favorite. Yes, well it sounds like you're, uh, you grew up in Vietnam, so this is sort of a Vietnamese kind of simple sandwich. Uh, Vietnamese inspired, you know, it's a great way to uh, have gluten-free or almost like a wrap salad that right. you can just hold onto your hand. I'm gonna be mincing garlic. I'm gonna show you a really good way to peel them if you need to peel like 80 cloves. Well, like when you're doing chicken with exactly. 40 cloves. Four cloves of garlic, right? Okay. So I'm going to cut, cut these up and then I'm going to shake in a bowl and then... Uh, oh, I like tricks. This is fun. This is what makes us happy in the kitchen. These right? are like tricks. All these silly little things. These what makes our day a little easier. Once we learn these, we'll uh, kind of feel a little special. So, yeah, we, we just feel like geniuses. You've exactly, got to be magic you know, in the kitchen. Simple tricks. So you get, All right, so wait a second. Let's slow so, down. So, so you, you get, got those in there. Garlic, you can get two uh, metal bowls. Mm. They, they sound really good. Yeah. Or you can get like a, a pot and a lid. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and shake it up like this. Wow. Is this like a boy thing? Is this like boys yeah, is like it? this? <laughs> or is this a musician thing? <laughs> we just like to have fun. Make a lot of noise. Or this is a kid thing. See? Oh, wow. Now we can go ahead and mince. Wow. Right? I like that. Really three close Boy, now. there's an aroma of garlic coming out of there. So now we're going to, I'm sure you're going to make fast work of that. Oh, so I'm just going to slice it real thin first. While you're doing that, tell me what you should be looking for when you go to buy shrimp. Well, um, I like to buy smaller size, like you know, 16, 20s, because the bigger they are, the tougher the meat is, I think. Okay. A little chewier, you know, um, just like lobster. Right? Gotcha. All right. So you said 1620s? 1620s, you 10s, you 12s, or max. Yeah, what he's talking about, you can, right. keep, you can keep chopping while I explain this, <laughs> is that, um, you know, they say small, medium, large doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, so you have to think about how many, 1620 means there's 16 to 20 shrimp in one pound. So you'll get used to the number of shrimp you like in a pound, and you will focus on what size those are. But just saying smaller, medium, or large is not going to help you. Look right. at the shrimp and think about the size. OK, so you added some. So this is a basic marinade. Oh. I love garlic, tons of garlic. I do too. Yeah, it just tastes like Like What's life without garlic? So a little olive oil or a grapeseed oil, whatever oil you like. You like the grapeseed too? I love it. And yeah. um, for barbecue, I thought I'd throw some hot sauce in there. A little spicy, a little okay. heat, you know? Black pepper, I love crushed black pepper, very okay. coarse, that's my preference. Okay. And of course, some salt. Some salt. Right. So while we get that on the grill, let's talk about sustainable shrimp. Right. What kind of choices should we be making? Because you can buy shrimp from around the world. Most farms in Canada and U.S. has great practices. So that would be... Versus some countries that we don't know exactly what's right. going on there. Right. Are we ready to get the shrimp on the grill? Yes. What temperature grill? Medium high. We'll grill each side for about you know, a minute and a half, okay. two minutes, depending on mm -hmm. how much shrimp you have on. So it's pretty quick. It's very quick. This you is know. a great weeknight meal for that reason. It's great for parties, great for yeah. banquets, great to have, you know, a small bite. Yeah. It smells good already. It does. So the salad's gonna have uh, cucumber, scallions, uh, tomatoes, and herbs. While you're doing that, I'm gonna start cutting uh, tomatoes. Okay. Oh, we have some beautiful tomatoes. So I wanna ask you, so you 
lived in Vietnam till you were nine. Yes. And then you moved to the United States. Why did you move to the United States? Well, because, uh, we moved to the United States because my, my dad had escaped after the war. Mm -hmm. He was one of the boat refugees, mm -hmm. along with uh, my two older brothers and my uncles and grandfather. Wow. You can only take so many family members with you because there's only so much gold you could have to pay off the, the people with the boats. Wow, are you serious? Harvest that serious. Cash didn't mean anything back then. It was gold. So your dad and uncles came over. Right, and we were sponsored by Arlo Guthrie. Arlo Guthrie? Yeah. Uh, That's my hippie childhood. Really? Well, childhood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were like, he, childhood. You know, he was, was too. a little older. Yeah. That's he, so cool. Yeah, it was great. He sponsored my, my, my family over, and, we st and they stayed at, at his home. Um, so he helped my, my father get started. How the heck did you, well, okay, we, yeah. we won't go off. That's yeah. for another time. <laughs> Arlo Guthrie, I have to get over that one. It's great, yeah. Okay, so then your dad opened up the restaurant. Yes, first Vietnamese restaurant in, um, in the county. Wow. A small it, little diner. What served, county, though? Uh, Berkshire County. So you were in the yeah, Berkshires? Yes, yeah. Okay. Grew up there and, uh, you know. That's in western Massachusetts. Western Massachusetts. Pittsburgh. Beautiful part of Massachusetts. Great. It's a beautiful part of the country. Yes. Oh. By the time I got over here, he was already in the process of opening up a second restaurant. And you have a bunch of siblings? I have four older brothers. Um, I'm, I'm the youngest. Oh, you're the baby. Yes. You're the darling. <laughs> and okay, and then what happened? So you all grew up in Pittsfield. And then, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we all, uh, both, both my other brothers decided to go to uh, CIA, CIA also. That's so funny. Yeah, so. Culinary Institute of America, yeah. the Harvard of cooking schools. <laughs> So, shrimp's almost done. If you look on this one. You mean where it's opaque? Where it's getting a little white. You can't see through it anymore. Can't see through it anymore. Okay. That's when you know it's done. Okay. And it's okay if you just knead him well. We'll let that rest okay. for half a second. Right. Yes, and yes, yes. then we're gonna cut it up and we're gonna make ourselves. I've got an idea. While that's resting for half a second, I've got an herb garden. What do you want to put in the salad? I love way? cilantro, mint. Um, okay, well, yeah, I have so. everything. All I have right. everything. You better come see. So back there, you see in the corner? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And you know how about mint. Mint just is like rabbits. They just keep going. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, that's lovely. All right. We're like two brides in a wedding. <laughs> okay. So. I love herbs. Oh, so do I. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm so glad that they're finally so readily available. When I first started cooking, it was like a big deal. So we're going to take the um, tomatoes, we're going to mix it here. right into the bowl. Yep, here, you know what, you want to see? I, oh. I have favorite tools too, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can do your garlic trick, but go. I'm going to do my tomato trick. All right, this here we go. This is called Giant Cake Lifter, I highly it's, recommend it. It's very big, a pie lifter almost. You yes, know? yes, yes. Okay. So to this mixture, we're going to add... How much of that? Uh, you know, depending on the mood right now, let's just... You know, about three okay. tablespoons. We're gonna add vinegar, salt, and sugar. Do you want me to do that? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, but should we do that? Why don't I do the herbs first? I'm gonna actually let you season it because I know it's gonna be one of those magical things. Yeah, You're yeah. gonna add exactly the right <laughs> amount of everything. Tell me what happens with the mint. I love uh, mint when it's like big chunks. So we're gonna go ahead and rip it. Show me it. one. I'll Just do the rest. Rip it, rip it. You know, okay. Natural. Okay, fun. Ooh, this is fun. Yeah, okay, we, without yeah. a knife. Without a knife. I like to do this. That way. Okay, I'll do it. I'll right, do the fine. rest. I'll cut, I'll cut some cilantro for now. Okay. Uh, cilantro, I like eat, uh, the stems where all the flavors are. I know, it's so and, amazing. Yeah. People, I don't so, think people have gotten the message yet no. that every part of cilantro so is usable. It's, the, it's one of the few herbs that you can. Right. And I'm gonna go ahead and be generous with this. I love Ooh, it. Oh, I love it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the meat off the shrimp tail. Now, why did we cook it with the tail on if we're now taking the tail off? Actually, the shell has given the shrimp a lot flavor. more flavor. flavor. I'm going to go ahead and cut the shrimp in big chunks. Okay. I'm still going to let you season this because I right. know you're going to do the magical, exact, right amount of everything. Season by eye. Right. Okay, so we've got we go. vinegar. Vinegar, uh, no, any vinegar would do. The most simple one is the white vinegar. Okay. I knew it. I knew it. Just, that was exactly whatever it was supposed to be. Exactly. You know, and then about that's kosher that's salt. One tablespoon. Okay, salt is really important. Salt and sugar. Mm. It's always balancing out the flavors. Now this is interesting. These actually get cut, or you do something to. Well, them. If, if if you want to put a lot of shrimp, then you keep it whole, and you can mm. go ahead and eat like this mm -hmm. as that's a big a taco. Wood. Yeah. You know, big taco. But then uh, at home, you know, this we can save for chopped lettuce. 
Don't throw you know, anything now out. Now you want to get really fancy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you square it off. Mm -hmm. Let's make a few to put right, on the plate, right. and I'll get us a few more leaves so we okay. can do um, two more for us to eat. Okay. This is very, very healthy and light. It's just natural ingredients. Right. Pure flavors. Okay. Very exciting. Perfect. Now this is my idea of lunch. They could, they could serve this in spas, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Okay, well, it's fun to here eat. we go. Before we eat, I just want to say, I hope you make this. These are your shrimp lettuce wraps right. um, from Chef Hong Wen. Oh. Wow. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Mm. It's, a, it's a, little, a little trippy, but it's okay. Mm. It's worth it. Mm. So worth it. sustainable fish today with Chef Hung Huyen, and we're on to whole fish. Tell me what we're making. We're gonna make a roasted branzino, marinated with garlic and herbs, and sauteed vegetables. Yum, very simple. Okay, so now why did we pick this fish? It's a small fish, mm -hmm. it's a bass, mm -hmm. and it's farm-raised, mm -hmm. and so it's sustainable. Yes. I love eating smaller fish because it's sweeter in flavor. It's That's nice and clean, okay. right? Fish should not smell like fish, it should smell like the ocean. It should smell like, let's take a quick whiff. No, it smells wonderful. Smells good to me. Yes. Smells okay. clean to me. Like clean. So water. after it's cleaned, we have this. Right. Okay. Let me get it out of the way. So um, I like to score the fish a little bit, just right to the middle of the bone. And and the point of this is so that the marinade, the marinade goes, goes down goes in. in. And with those crevices, you'll get more flavor. Right. More there. marinade can go in, yeah. and it cooks a little more evenly. And so here are our marinade ingredients. So I'm going to give you the garlic since we know how much do we need. We need a couple tablespoons. I right? need about six cloves. It's okay. fine. Why don't I zest the lemon while you chop the garlic? So we put our marinade in here to mix yes. it up. I do want to talk about these restaurants that you've worked at. You've worked at Per Se, you've worked at Guy Savoy, um, you've worked at Les Pinas. Those I, are like some of the best restaurants in the country. I think, you know, for every different restaurant you go to, there's always something to learn from that, whether it be a, a cafe or a three Michelin star restaurant. The way you put it is really where you get out. You know, you can be the best restaurant, but if you don't pay attention, you're not going to learn. You're anything. not going to learn much. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to chop up some parsley. Yep. We need two tablespoons of thyme, okay, so and use a quarter cup of parsley yep. leaves. Go ahead, mm -hmm. pick up the stems a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let me see. So the last restaurant you worked at was Catch. Catch, uh, which is uh, based on seafood, mm -hmm. globally inspired seafood. But now you're moving on to your mm -hmm. own place. Now moving on to uh, create my own brand and uh, really promote Vietnamese cuisine. So I'm going to go ahead. Some paprika in there. And um, where are you going to have this restaurant? Well, we're, we're going to start in New York City. Uh, there's nice. A, there's several so I can locations. come. Very good. Definitely. I love olive oil and uh, just be generous. It doesn't hurt. All right. All right salt. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me stir it up a little bit yeah, here please. for you. Okay. And now you marinate these for how long? You can marinate for half an hour, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't need to go that long because. Um, if it goes too long, is that a problem? Not that big of a mm -hmm. problem, but just going to. Draw out too much uh, moisture from the fish. So the itself, salt will right. do it. Yeah. I like cooking with my hands. You must. You have do to it. touch it. And there's no. There's to no it. better t tool than. You know, that. you have to trust the chef. You but if look. you're in a restaurant, you wear gloves. I <laughs> know that. Yep. But we're we're cooking for each other, so. Hey, go ahead and be generous with it. Mm -hmm. Stuff it in there. I like this. Yep. This is wonderful. Oh, and you, you bake them that way. Put it back way. up so it looks beautiful. It looks like it's still swimming. So I'm going to do the same thing to this. And this, each fish is for one person? Well, if you, if you like to eat fish, you can have for one. If you, for me, it's probably two fish per person, but... Uh. <laughs> you love fish. Is that your favorite thing? I love thing? fish. Look at okay, that. I'm going to put this in the fridge. You're going to hose down. Yep. And then you, we're going to go on out and um, just catch... While this marinates, uh, we can catch up and have a little drink in the garden. All right. Half an hour. All right. Come back. So I have a question. You won Top Chef season three. Yes. What was that like? It was a great experience, of course. If I didn't win, it would be the bad experience. Ah. Uh, no, but no, I'm much happier than I won, of, of course. course. Well, I just can't imagine cooking under that kind of pressure. What did you make? I made everything under the sun. Mm -hmm. Tell <laughs> me uh, your favorite thing you made. The favorite thing I made was um, sous vide duck breast with. Um, Foie gras and truffle jus. Ooh, wow. You know the compliment from the, from the judges were it was a three-star Michelin 
dish. I love duck too. Yeah. Oh, oh duck. yummy. We should go check the fish. Oh, yes. Okay, so this goes in a, what, 375? Yes. For how long? Uh, 20, 25 minutes. All right, so now we're going to make the sauce. And there we are with these sweet ingredients again. So interesting. Okay. So I love blending soy with balsamic. Really? Because when you reduce the balsamic, it's a little tart, a little sweet. So I balance that with a little soy to give it a little more savoriness, a more roundness like to the that. dish. Like yeah. So we're going to start with the... Uh, Got a cup? Oh, a cup. And how much honey about... Uh, Two tablespoons. Okay. Okay. And then how much soy sauce? About a quarter cup. Okay. We're going to let it reduce to about um, half or to a quarter to a little thick where it sticks to the back of the spoon. You're going to help me um, so, so cut some vegetables. Okay. So with onions and some tomatoes. And I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, garlic going while I'm doing okay. the onions. I'm going to go ahead and generously add about you know three or four tablespoons of olive oil. In the pan? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, for this dish, um, we're going to cook the onions in a little medium heat. And then you're just doing a little julienne. Julienne, yeah. I'm going to add the peppers. Okay. Add, add, add the, uh, tomatoes. tomatoes go in? Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Uh -huh. And I'm going to go ahead and cut the fennel. Add it in. Uh -huh. Why not? I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more salt. I was gonna say, salt. you haven't added any salt yet. A little salt, oh, and then want... we're gonna add some white wine for, oh. for liquid. Okay. For another layer of flavor and acidity. Yep, yep. Don't be shy, it's no, only wine. No, no. And okay. again, add a little butter. Ah, I, you're gonna add it now? Yeah, it's like everything glaze, glaze, reduce, you know. Okay, Something. butter. You Why keep not? surprising me. I know. <laughs> Wanna keep me guessing? <laughs> I, I'm not shy, so uh -huh. if not, add a little extra olive oil is fine olive too. Oil. Why okay? not? Why not? Yeah. A little pepper, lots uh -huh. of pepper. You know, I love pepper. We should go check the fish. All right. Wow, this looks fantastic. What do you think? It looks amazing. Now, how do we know it's done, Hung? Well, uh, we can stick a little um, fork or spoon in there, uh -huh. and we can just peek at it a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Almost, it's coming off the bone. It's coming off the bone. And the meat is uh, not translucent anymore. See okay. that? Look at this, yep. falling off. Okay. How amazing that is. Wow. Okay, now yeah. you're going to show us how to yep. bone that out. But first, let's take a look at these vegetables. Those well, look at that. Beautiful. Now the tomatoes have broken up. Let me, let me get you know, a spoon just to you know, see. And the wine and the tomatoes look at, have look married. Look how thick that is. That's the beautiful. The butter, the olive oil, you know, it's Yay, perfect. that's a home that. run. It is delicious. Look at that. So that goes underneath. Yes. Well, that'd be good all by itself. It's, it's great by itself. The vegetarians are all going, yay! Minus the butter, it's fine too. You know, put oh, extra okay, olive oil. Well, that's vegan. Right, that's, that's yeah, vegan. exactly. There we go. Looks great. All right, now take your time for those of us. Take your time. Need to I pay mean, attention. I'm, I'm just going to go right on top by the. So we're going down the backbone. Back, backbone. And slowly take it out. Oh, that's so but, beautiful looking. And it's okay if it's a little. Flaky, who cares? It's okay. Wonderfully that, moist. It's natural. Look at that. Look how white the meat is. And you leave the skin on because it's oh, perfect. Oh, yeah, tasty. I love the skin. I mean, that's where all So, the, really, you know, nobody should be scared. Just just oh, no. know where the backbone is and go right. down either side right, of the backbone exactly. with your spoon. So, now, you know, look at that. See the blade is sticking to the spoon. There we look go, yeah. It so coats now, the back of the spoon. So, now this gives it another dimension of flavor and the layer. I like this. I like all you these know? layers. This is much more exciting. This is letting the flavor shine. Yes, I agree. You know, we agree on that. Make it a pop, make it a dance. Wow. Okay. Well, I've set up a little table in the garden. Let is let's go dine. Yes. So, how do you like my garden here? Beautiful. I mean, don't, wouldn't you love to dine like this every day? So, do you mind serving me because it's so far away? We've got that. Uh, you're familiar with forbidden, forbidden rice. rice. Yes. Yeah, it's what they used to save for the emperors. It used to be so expensive, but it's really, really healthy rice. It's, it's got, uh, wonderfully chewy. Different flavor. I love the chewiness. Yes. And, here, I'm going to see if you can do this. Fish. Oh, you're going to hold it for me. How nice. Oh yeah, we love all these vegetables. So this would be a good dish, you know, do a whole bunch of them for a crowd, just like we did. And I'm even thinking this would be good at room temperature. It's fine room temperature. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm, mm, yikes, so good. Wow. Thank you so much for joining me today, Chef Hung. And um, good luck on your new restaurant. Can't wait to come. Thank Glad you. you're doing it in New York. 
And thank you all for joining us today to learn more about how to cook fish. I hope you're less scared. And, and I also hope that you choose those sustainable choices every time. Go to seafoodwatch.org. I'm Sarah Moulton. I'll see you next time for Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Cheers. Why not? There we go. You know, I think the rice is uh, good with this. What do you think? I love it. Mm -hmm. um, combination is great with the vegetables and chewiness of the rice. And chewiness, because I mean, you know, you could serve this with white rice too, mm. which is lovely, and I'm sure you like white rice a lot, but I just think the chewiness is good. I just like all the things that are going on in here. There's so many different textures and flavors. Rice super green is But very no. deeply seasoned fish can be yeah. very bland. It mm -hmm. needs acid, it needs salt, it, it needs, needs salt. flavor. Sarah's Weeknight Meals continues online. For recipes, helpful tips, messages, and lots more, visit us on the web at sarahmoulton.com forward slash weeknight meals. And go to our YouTube channel, Sarah's Weeknight Meals TV. Funding provided by... Family owned and Indiana grown, Maple Leaf Farms is a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. Providing a variety of duck products for home kitchens, Maple Leaf Farms duck helps inspire culinary adventures everywhere. Maple Leaf Farms. Subaru builds vehicles like the versatile Subaru Forester with symmetrical all wheel drive and plenty of cargo room. A recipe made for whatever the day brings. Subaru, a proud sponsor of Sarah's Weeknight Meals. And thanks to the generous support of